Hi, I'm going to be taking you through four really important terms for communication. Now, the first of which is the board rate, and this is the rate at which signals can change. And I personally think of it in terms of the number of pulses created per second. And let's not jump ahead. The unit is the board, BD, and it's named after a French engineer called Bordeaux who sort of created the predecessor to ASCII. So really important for more of one reason and he's been given this unit for the board rate. And the board rate is used as one of one of many measurements of speed. So if we look at a graph hopefully it will explain what I mean by a pulse. So we've got voltage on one axis and time measured in seconds on the x-axis. And as time moves along this system is producing pulses of voltage lasting a second each. So this it could be in binary, so 5 volts could be 1 in binary, 2 volts could represent 0 in binary. And so this is going 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 in that representation. So this has a board rate of 1 board, as the signal only changes once a second. So you can see, we look at the end of a signal, so in in this second, only one signal has actually been there. It's, it's only changed once, it's changed once at the end, and then the same applies. So each is one se there's one pulse per second, which is why we have a board rate of 1. If we look at a slightly higher board rate, or 3 this time, we've now got 3 pulses per second. The signal is changing 3 times within a single second, hence it's got a board rate of 3. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a change between high and low, it could just be two separate pulses, so two separate high pulses, two separate low pulses. Uh, it doesn't have to be a change in the sense if it's going from high to low, it could just be two separate pulses, but it needs to send separate signals, separate signals of light or separate signals of voltage in order to represent the ones or zeros or whatever it is it's representing. Another key term which is more prevalent is the bit rate and this is the rate at which data is actually sent and this is in terms of bits per second. So its unit is bits per second BPS and it's also a measurement of speed. So multiple measurements of speed and communications these are just two of them so far. So if we've got a similar-ish graph as I said before if we're assuming that 5 volts are representing 1 and 2 volts are representing 0 we, we can start to look at what the bit rate means in relation to the board rate. So here this as we said has, has got a board rate of 1, it's changing once a second, 1 pulse a second but it's also got a bit rate of 1 bits per second. We're sending 1 bit per second uh, because we've only got 2 voltage levels to play with. However if we now increase the number of voltage levels, so we now have 4 voltage levels, we've got 0, 2, 5 and this could be 6 we can increase the bit rate despite keeping the board rate the same. The board rate here is still 1, we've still got only one pulse created per second um, in this transmission, but the bit rate is 2 bits per second. We're sending 2 bits per second because each pulse is representing 2 bits now because we've got more voltage levels. So you can work out the bit rate given the board rate and how many bits are encoded. It's just the board rate, 1 in this case, multiplied by the number of bits. 2 in this case, so 1 times 2 is 2. That's the bit rate for this graph. And simple devices will use, they'll basically have the same board rate and the same bit rate. But more complicated and perhaps, well, especially analog devices, might try and, they'll have a higher bit rate than a board rate essentially because they'll be using setups like this where they're assigning multiple bits to each signal to try and push more data through per second. Another really important term is bandwidth, the bandwidth of a network, and this is the maximum rate of data transfer. So it's another measure of how quickly data can be sent, how fast it is, in other words. So for networks at least, bandwidth gives us the maximum capacity of the network, and it's measured in bits per second, so the same unit as bit rate, but this is the maximum theoretical capacity. Because bandwidth is the maximum capacity, when multiple people are using the network, it's shared between them. So the individual bit rates of the people using the network are going to be less than the bandwidth. And you'll be familiar with this, I'm sure, if you have, or you're meant to have 100 megabit per second internet, but your family are home or people around and using the internet, your individual bit rate is going to be less than this. It's going to slow down for you individually. Um, if you do a speed test, it will be less than the total bandwidth unless you are alone in the house and have access to all of the bandwidth available. For computer scientists at least, bits per second is a unit for bandwidth, which is perfectly right. When we're looking at the actual transmission media, so wireless communications or the electrical copper cables, which are analog, we often change the definition for bandwidth. And actually, if you Google the term bandwidth, you're likely to get several different definitions. Some 
extremely complicated, some quite simple. Fortunately, our definition for computer science one is relatively simple. But if you are a, a mathematician or physicist, the definitions are quite complicated. Fortunately, you don't have to go there. But for media and especially analog media, we're dealing with it in terms of hertz and specifically the bandwidth being the range of frequencies it can transmit. So bandwidth measured in hertz, this will be the upper frequency minus the lower frequency. So let's take a step back and try and work out what this means. So hopefully you would have come across this term in GCC physics. The frequency of the signal is how many waves it produces in one second, so how many waves there are in one second. And a full wave is its entire cycle, so a repeated wave like this sine wave is the entire start to end of this wave, so the positive amplitude and the negative amplitude. Not all waves have to repeat, uh, not all waves have to, but not all waves are sine waves clearly, so it's not quite as simple as this, but this is an entire wave and we would count how many waves there are like this in a single second and that would be its frequency measured in Hertz. So if we had, so here you can see the frequency is increasing because the waves are getting smaller on this fixed scale. So the frequency is increasing, the Hertz value is going up as we're squashing the waves and getting more in the same amount of time. Different transmission media are, are going to work in different ways, they're going to have a set range of frequencies they can accommodate which could be very high frequencies or very low frequencies and there will be kind of like a sweet spot where they can transmit this frequency to a good standard. And that's what bandwidth is, it's the range of frequencies that can be transferred by this transmission media without losing too much strength. So if we've got a graph here of increasing frequencies and increasing strength, this unit here is a unit of power, decibel, milliwatts. So this graph suggests there's an optimum point and we might also add a cutoff point so we can say that actually below this range here and above this range of frequencies here we can't actually transmit the data very effectively, it's going to be corrupted, it's going to get lost, it's not going to be very good. So we actually need to stick between a range of frequencies. So the lower frequency FL and the higher frequency FH for the upper frequency and so the bandwidth is going to be the difference between these, a range of um, usable frequencies and often this is us artificially saying this is too low now we've got to draw the line somewhere. This is looking at the sort of technical constraint i.e. a cable might not be able to accommodate such a high frequency but for us as humans if we're dealing with sound and sounds being transmitted maybe down a telephone line we can only hear as humans a set range of frequencies above I think it's about 22,000 Hertz we can't hear the sound so there's no point accommodating a very high frequency when we can't actually hear it ourselves. So that's why we might also have a limited bandwidth because there's no need to accommodate extremely high frequencies which we can't actually hear. Maybe this is obvious but because bandwidth is the upper capacity of the network it can limit what the bitrate is. Either the bitrate cannot be higher than the bandwidth. So if we're producing 5 bits per second, we're sending 5 bits per second, this being 1, this being 0 when we've got 0 volts, we may be limited. So say we can only accommodate one bit per second, this wireless router can only deal one bit per second if it's very very slow. It has got an effective bit rate of one bit per second. We're limiting our actual bit rate because we're, we're constrained by the bandwidth. The bandwidth is too low. So we've got a bit rate of five bits per second but it's reduced effectively to one bit per second or one hertz if we're looking at that definition. So as you increase the bandwidth, the higher the bit rate can be. So it's not guaranteed. So if you build a motorway a brand new motorway, it's not necessarily going to get used and if one person's on the motorway it's going to be very quick for them but if it's very congested it's going to slow down so it, it's, it's a potential maximum but if the motorway wasn't large enough then it's going to reduce the overall traffic speed. So these two terms are directly proportional to each other so if you increase the bandwidth you're going to in, you can increase your bit rate essentially. You can't increase the bandwidth by increasing the bit rate, the bandwidth has to come first, you need to have that upper limit extended. Fortunately we can wrap up with quite an easy term which is latency. This is the time delay between a cause and an effect. That's just the general definition of latency. For networks it's going to be the time it takes for data to be received. So that's in seconds, that's the unit of latency and it's the time between sending data and receiving it at the other end. Latency is then another measure of speed, another way of expressing the speed of a network and actually we often talk about round trip latency which is the measurement from all the time from the source to the destination then back again. This is partially because lots of messages go back and forth over the network, so you send a message to someone and they send a message back or an acknowledgement and it's the total elapsed time which is this round trip latency.
as I say, the unit is for second. We're dealing with time here, but often because the times are so small, we use prefixes. So from milli to nano, a millisecond is a thousandth of a second. So to give an example of a round trip latency, going back and forth between New York and London, so from London to New York and back again, is about 55 milliseconds with a fiber optic cable. So a very, very small amount of time back and forth and that's due to fiber optic cables using light as the main signal. It's important to realize that latency and bandwidth aren't the same thing. This could be very, very fast. It could be rapid for one single bit of data, but very slow for 10 bits of data. You know, they're not exactly the same thing, bandwidth and latency.